module innovation facts. Module innovation facts. In the last lecture, we talked about the myths of innovation. This lecture, I want to talk to you about some facts about innovation. About 10 years ago, I started teaching some MBA courses on innovation. In the final exam one year, I asked students to list some facts about innovation. I found if a student wrote 10 real facts, he'd usually get an A. But I also found that students struggled to come up with real facts about innovation. Their answers were too short, not enough facts, or too ambiguous. They couldn't be considered a fact. Based on this experience, I invested four years of my life doing research with over 400 companies to identify the key drivers of innovation success. The seven key learnings are strategic alignment is the cornerstone of innovation success. That's what we're talking about today. Alignment, getting things in the right direction. If you want to give autonomy, you need to have strategic alignment first. If you get alignment, attitudes and learning orientation in place, systems will typically follow. The right balance between disruptive and incremental innovation is key. Proactivity is the one thing you need to reward. And it doesn't matter if you're in a big company or a small company. You always need to act like you're in a successful startup. And you have to walk before you run. You have to think in terms of systems moving forward step by step. Sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Well, these key learnings can be boiled down to something even simpler. Purpose, process, and persistence. Alignment helps in all of these areas. Companies that are aligned usually have to find a purpose. When they have a purpose, they usually build the processes. And a process helps ensure companies are persistent in the right areas. As a teacher, there's always a challenge with facts. How to make this information actionable? The solution is simple. It's theory. Good theory is based on facts. It's parsimonious. It's simple. Think of E equals MC squared. You know, the actual equation is a lot more than that but it's something everybody remembers. It's prescriptive and it's something that can be tested. Let me give you an example of the importance of theory. For years, people looked at birds and concluded feathers are linked to the ability to fly. Yes, birds have feathers, but people with feathers glued on them cannot fly. Theory can help people identify the actual techniques that enable flying. Feathers create lift. Lift helps things fly. When you know this, you can make things that fly. It's the same with innovation. When you know what causes what, you can do the right things. Here's my innovation theory in simple terms. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. That's from Aristotle. What we are willing to do repeatedly is determined by our desires, abilities, and systems. And systems are what drive everything. This all starts with alignment. Innovation is the product of two parts, the amount of value created and the amount of value captured. If you fail in one area, you fail to deliver altogether. Innovation isn't easy because when there's a wink leak, the systems fails. Imagine you have a company that is great at building ideas, great at product development, but can't sell things. Innovation fails. The weakest link, any link, can lead to failure. The ABCs of innovation, the core of my book cycles, and all the courses in our innovation program reflect this principle. When you get alignment, building ideas, communicating, and checking ideas and systems right, you build bigger ideas faster while reducing risk. When you miss alignment, you get chaos and wasted energy. When you miss the ability to build ideas, you get weak ideas and small improvements. When you can't communicate and check in ideas, You'll waste resources on bad ideas or won't be able to market your good ideas. When you don't have clear systems to work under, you won't be able to achieve big things because you don't do it step by step. Module alignment. This is where everything starts. Before you decide to do something, you need to know what you're going to do. This is especially important in the area of innovation. Because even the best innovators fail around 80% of the time. Here's the hard math of innovation. In 10 different studies, the average success rate is just 8%. You'll see most studies are not very recent. If they were more recent studies, the average would fall even further because it's getting harder and harder to succeed. Just like before, when we simplified seven key learnings down to a few words, let me try to simplify these numbers for you. 
Suppose, suppose 100 products I launch, about 40% are not doing a real job. About half of the remaining are not doing a job good enough to get hired. And about half of the remaining ones are not hired profitably. If they're successful innovations, delivery caption value. This leads to a normal success rate of around 15%. This is so important. I'd like to go through this again. This time we're going to do it graphically. It's estimated that about 40% of products launched don't do anything useful for any of them. These are easy to kill. About half of the remaining ones are not things people are willing to pay for. These are sad to kill. For about half that remain, people are not willing to pay enough. These are hard to kill. This leaves us with a 15% success rate of innovation. So how can you be in that 15%? The key is alignment, a focus on creating things of value people are willing to pay for. Innovation is not a short-term game. Winners learn to do things better over time and build different business models. They build solutions over time. The defining characteristic of good innovation, successful innovation, is the ability to capture value. How do you capture value? Let's look at an example based on car drivetrains. I know it's not very sexy, but a car can't drive without a drivetrain. Yet today, they just get 3% of profit. They could do things differently by focusing on their business models. This example will show you the power of a long-term focus uh, and focus on business model of innovation. Here's what a typical drivetrain manufacturer's business look like. On a 40K car, there might be around 5K in net margin. The drivetrain costs about $2,100 and generates a new margin of 147. This is 3% of the total profits on a car. Imagine they add some extra value and are able to capture some of that value. These are the basics of innovation. Let's assume the extra value is 350. Let's assume they can capture 150 of that value. This will lead to a doubling of their margin to 6%. Business model innovation is the next level of innovation after product innovation. It's about creating even more value, more value for you, more value for your partners, and becoming a critical part of the value chain. Let's assume they make a smarter drivetrain that offers even more power and fuel efficiency. And let's assume this could be sold for 700 to consumers. Keeping costs similar, this would deliver even more margin to auto manufacturing. This is more margin for partners. Having increased the power and efficiency, the drivetrain is now an integral part of the car, not just another part. This will allow them to charge a bit more. Let's assume they're able to capture half of this value, up to 350. The end result is more margin, three times more, and a more sustainable competitive position. The only way to do this is with clear alignment and a focus on creating and capturing value. A question for you, what's Google's biggest innovation success? You might say email, you might say new AI stuff. No, the reality is Google has created a lot of innovations that create a value in many ways, but arguably their biggest success is AdWords. AdWords is the profit engine of Google. AdWords got ad, get ads in front of people when they're searching for specific things. They're the real value for advertising. But where they excelled was making AdWords work for companies large and small by setting up an auction system, which allows them to get the highest amount companies are willing to pay for every single ad. As a company, they're aligned on value creation and value capture. So how do you get such innovation results like this? You might think the solution is give your employees a lot of autonomy and let them figure things out. In our four-year study on what drives innovation results, we found out something surprising. In most companies, there is a negative, yes, a negative correlation between autonomy and innovation results. As an American, I was brought up to believe in the value of individual initiative. This result really bothered me, but these were the facts. We dug a little bit more. We found the reason. In most companies, there's not a clear focus on what needs to be done. When you give autonomy in this context, people do more things that don't need to be done, and they miss the metrics to improve what they're doing. I dug a bit more and found out something really important. When there's a clear focus on generating consumer value and capturing value, autonomy becomes positively correlated with results. In this context, people know what to do and why, and they get the job done. We saw earlier the average success rate for innovation is around 15%. The 
I also talked to rather complained about innovation gurus, but some of these gurus deserve their guru title. One of these gurus that impressed me is the strategy group. They have a powerful methodology called outcome-driven innovation, which claims innovation success rates around 70%. I don't really believe the numbers, but I do believe in the logic of their method. Their method starts at the end of the process and works backward. They identify needs people are willing to pay to resolve, develop a solution, then find a market. What this method does is it gets people aligned on the long-term goals of value creation and value capture. Good alignment is about finding, figuring out what, for who, before the how. Defining ways to increase value creation and value capture along the way, and then putting the goals into a mission people can understand and use to track their progress. Zig Ziglar, the legendary motivational speaker and author, once told a story about a famous archer, Howard Hill, who won all of the 267 archery contests he entered. He could hit a bullseye at 50 feet, then split the first arrow with the second shot. He, th he then asked, how could you beat him? It would be easy if he didn't know where the target was, just blindfold. When we're unclear about our target, we're blindfold. Alignment done right defines what the target is and why we want to hit it. It is obvious you can't hit a target you can't see. Even worse, how can you hit a target you don't even have? You need to have clear goals. The objective alignment is not just to agree where you're going, but also to make sure you're going to the right place. The most common cause of innovation failure is not people doing things wrong, but people doing the wrong things. I have a fun story about the amount of time I spent doing the right things right when I worked at Procter & Gamble. For a week, we were asked to classify all our time into four categories, into a simple chart. We had right things, and we had wrong things. We had right things right, wrong th right things wrong, wrong things wrong, and wrong things right. So I filled in my diary and I looked at the results. I found out I was spending just 30% of my time doing the right things right. I needed to present my results back to my boss. For a moment, I thought about falsifying the results, but decided to face the music. I told my boss, expecting to get some sort of lecture, he said my results weren't that bad. The average in the company was just 24%, six points less than mine, which was already quite low. He asked me a question. How could you get more done? How much more could you get done if you increase this to 80%? At P&G, they have some of the brightest and best people in the world. If they have so much room for improvement, there's probably room for improvement in your teams and the work you're doing. Your goal should be 80% right thing right. 80% 80 80 right thing right is a tough target and probably too high, but at least you need to make sure you're doing the right things 80% of the time. Even if you're doing the wrong things right, you'll still be moving in the wrong direction. In fact, research has shown it's better to do right things wrong than the wrong things right. So when people know what is right, they can correct what they're doing. As we have seen, alignment is critical for innovation success. An alignment team can focus on where there's value focus on the end results, can work together on the right things. Alignment is built on two parts, being able to explain what you want your team to do and being able to choose the right things to do. In the next module, we're going to explain a simple method to make everything clear. This method is called True North.